Hey everyone, Vinayak here. Today we're checking out the 7000 series graphic cards from AMD, from the smallest to the biggest. So you have the RX 7600, the 7700, the 7900 XT. What is the difference between all of these cards? Let's check them out in this video. Thanks to Vishal Computech for providing this review sample. Looking to purchase a new laptop or build a new custom PC for work or play? Vishal Computech is there to help. Located at showroom number 2 Park Lane in Secunderabad, make sure to visit the store for desktops, laptops, computer components and more. So the cards I'm comparing today are the RX 7600, 7700 XT, 7800 XT, 7900 XT and the big daddy of them all, the 7900 XTX. And all these GPUs are based on the RDNA 3 architecture which consists of the compute units featuring ray tracing and AI acceleration. From the smallest, the RX 7600 has 32 compute units, 32 ray accelerators, GPU clock of 2250 MHz, Infinity Cache is 32 MB, Max memory is 8 GB, GDDR6 memory. The 7700 XT ups the compute units to 54 and re accelerators to 54 too. And a GPU clock is 2171 MHz, 48 MB of Infinity Cache and 12 GB of GDDR6 memory. The 7800 XT has 60 compute units, 60 re accelerators, 2124 MHz GPU clock. 64 MB Infinity Cache, 16 GB of GDDR6 memory. Then we have the 7900 XT with 84 compute units, 84 ray accelerators, 2000 MHz GPU clock, 80 MB Infinity Cache, 20 GB of GDDR6 memory. There's also the 7900 GRE or Golden Rabbit Edition just below the 7900 XT, but I didn't get a chance to check it out as it's not available in the store. Also, it's called the Golden Rabbit Edition as 2023 is the year of the rabbit in Chinese culture. Also, I've heard that outside China, it's not available separately, but only in a full system build. And lastly, the flagship card from AMD Stable, the 7900 XTX, which has 96 compute units, 96 ray accelerators, GPU clock of 2300 MHz, 96 MB of infinity cache, max memory size of 24 GB GDDR6 memory. You will notice that the 7800 XT onwards, the cards have more VRAM than their competitors at that price point. You might have noticed the word Infinity Cache in the list. AMD refers to the Infinity Cache as a massive bandwidth amplifier that can deliver up to 3.25 times the bandwidth of 256-bit 16GBPS GDDR6. This means that the cache can be seen by the entire graphics core, allowing it to access data instantaneously and allowing for faster rendering during gameplay. AMD Radiance Display Engine brings the support for DisplayPort 2.1 connections on the cards. This opens up long-term support for much higher refresh rates. At 1440p, the connection is capable of 900Hz. 480Hz is the limit for DisplayPort 1.4. This bandwidth becomes more important at higher resolutions like 4K, which is capped at generally 240Hz with DisplayPort 1.4, but it can do 480Hz with DisplayPort 2.1. At 8K, DisplayPort 1.4 is limited to 60Hz, but DisplayPort 2.1 can go 165Hz. The 7900 XT and XTX cards have AV1 support which is going to be an important feature when consuming video content online and especially for streamers as it can open up higher quality video streaming at lower bandwidth. AMD has included support for two simultaneous encode or decode streams. The benchmarks I'm running are only between these Radeon models. My testbed consists of an AMD Ryzen 9 7900X, 32GB of DDR5 RAM at 6000 mega transfers per second. Motherboard is the ROG Crosshair X670E Hero Motherboard. OS is Windows 11 Pro. AMD Adrenaline Graphics Driver is 23.10.1, which is the latest version at the time of recording. Checking out Cyberpunk 2077 on the 7600 has a fighting chance at 1080p with a decent 83 FPS. As you go up the chart, we get 119 FPS on the 7700 XT, 141 FPS on the 7800 XT, 7900 XT we have 170 FPS and 192 FPS on the 7900 XTX. 1440p the 7600 did have problems but the 7700 XT runs at 78 FPS, 7800 XT at 94 FPS, 7900 XT at 116 FPS and 7900 XTX runs the game at 136 FPS. At 4K at native resolution, it's suggested to run the games on 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX, which manages to churn out around 55 FPS and 67 FPS respectively. 
Grand Theft Auto 5 at 1080p, the RX 7600 runs the game at 123 FPS. The RX 7700 XT ups it to 164 FPS. The 7800 XT takes it to 176. The top dogs, the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX, run the game at 178 and 180 FPS respectively. At 1440p, we have 113 FPS on the RX 7700 XT, 147 FPS on on the 7800 XT. 174 on the RX 7900 XT and 178 FPS on the 7900 XTX. At 4K, the 7900 XT and XTX run the game at 95 and 114 FPS respectively. PUBG Battlegrounds at 1080p, we have 148 FPS on the 7600, 204 FPS on the 7700 XT, 243 FPS on the 7800 XT, 276 on the 7900 XT, and 298 FPS on the 7900 XTX. At 1440p, the 7900 XT runs the game at 136 FPS. The 7800 XT at 167 FPS, 7900 XT at 208, and 7900 XTX at 243 FPS. Now at 4K, the 7900 XT runs the game at 119 FPS, and the 7900 XTX runs it at 144 FPS. Resident Evil 4 at 1080p, the 7600 runs at 77 FPS, the 7700 XT at 121 FPS, 7800 XT at 143 FPS. 7900 XT at 179 FPS and the 7900 XTX at 213 FPS. Upping the resolution to 1440p, the 7700 XT runs the game at 90 FPS. The 7800 XT at 108 FPS, 7900 XT at 137 FPS, PS and the 7900 XTX runs the game at 162 FPS. At 4K, the 7900 XT runs the game at 78 FPS and the 7900 XTX runs the game at 96 FPS. Looking at the benchmarks, we see that the RX 7600 is a good budget card for 1080p gaming. The 7600 provides great value for entry-level gamers. Want to game at 1440p? The 7700 XT and the 7800 XT are great choices. Of course, the 16 GB VRAM and six extra compute units on the 7800 XT provides a bit more edge over the 7700 XT. These are great cards for 1440p gaming. Now for 4K gaming and even beyond. AMD have their 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX models. These are high performance cards and with 20 plus GB video memory, they are future ready for games that need a lot of VRAM. These cards allow running your games at 4K ultra without a hitch. But if you need more performance, just turn on FSR. Three important features of Radeon GPUs are RSR or Radeon Super Resolution. Radeon Super Resolution is an in-driver upscaling feature that uses the same algorithm found in AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Basically, you reduce the resolution of the game, and RSR upscales the image to your native resolution. Higher resolution means better visual quality, and lower resolution means more performance. And this is a balance of the two. better visuals and better performance and advantage is that the game doesn't need to support rsr also rsr is only supported by amd gpus fsr fidelity fx super resolution amd's fidelity fx super resolution uses cutting edge open upscaling and frame generation technologies to help boost your frame rates in supported games and deliver amazing high quality high performance gaming on virtually any hardware FSR 3 is the current iteration is only supported by RDNA 3 GPUs at present via beta drivers. FSR 2 is GPU agnostic so it's usable on non AMD hardware too. Kudos to AMD for bringing new life to older GPUs. SAM or smart access memory. AMD smart access memory allows AMD Ryzen processors to harness the full potential of the graphics memory by giving the CPU access to all of the VRAM. Most CPUs can only access around 256 MB of GPU memory at a time, but with SAM, a CPU can write to the entire VRAM. Make sure above 4G deep coding and resize bar support are enabled in your BIOS to use smart access memory. Now, what you would like to know are the costs. The Sapphire Pulse RX 7600 costs around 31,699 online, which at an offline store costs rupees 26,200. The 7700 XT basically costs around 45,000, but the ASUS Tough model costs around 53,299 online, which at an offline store costs 52,000 rupees. The Sapphire Nitro 7800 XT costs around 59,990 online, which at an offline store costs rupees 56,500. The MSI Gaming Trio Classic RX 7900 XT costs around 90,126 rupees online, which at an offline store costs 86,500.
the Sapphire AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX costs around 1 lakh 9000 online which at an offline store costs 1 lakh 6000 rupees. I would suggest purchasing your computer hardware at a store as one you get lower costs Two, you can always try out the hardware out at the stores like Vishal Computech have their experience zones, especially for AMD, which can help with your choice. And three, exchange the product if anything goes wrong, it's easier to do at a physical store. Best to open the box and check the item before leaving the store too. So that was a quick rundown of the 7000 series GPUs by AMD and the features supported. Hope this clears any doubts you had on these cards and if you still have any questions, make sure to comment below. So that was the video, make sure to like subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.